What is up you guys, Mental Hog back here for episode 11 of the Leicester City Career Mode in FIFA 23. We're in season two. We finished third in the Premier League, so we've got Champions League football. We won the FA Cup with this team right here. Jamie Vardy carried us to pretty much, pretty much everything that we did last season. All thanks to that guy. By the way, he is retiring at the end of this year. We have got so many things we need to do, so many players we need to sign. This team needs to change. We need to be ready for a Champions League season. And you already know that we're going to be spending all of this 173 million trying to reinforce the squad, upgrade the squad, and get us prepared. And that is what we're going to do in today's episode. Spend a lot of money. I hope you guys are excited by that. If you are, Welcome to my channel. If you're new here as well, be sure to subscribe down below. A lot of you watching are, so help me out I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, drop a like down below if you enjoy this video, me spending money all over the dang place, and let's not waste that much more time. Let's talk about what we need to do this season. So obviously, we're in the Champions League, but we don't necessarily have a squad that matches that in a lot of areas. I would say our striker position, Vardy and Daka, both 80 rated. Vardy's retiring this season. Daka not quite high enough rated in my opinion to start for a champions league side so that's priority number one we also need a left back we have been playing a right back there all season long last year and he's only 79 rated got to do better there and we need a better starting center back chris smalling starting to fall off in his rating had a great season one for us and vout Foss, he's fine but uh definitely also not champions league ready so we need a partner for joe gomez we also need some more depth on the wings and in the midfield in my opinion that would be the absolute way to go. And I have got a lot, and I mean a lot, of options in mind. Most of them, by the way, suggested by you guys in the comments down below. So thank you so much for all your suggestions throughout Season 1. I did go back through and check them all out, and I wrote them down on my little Ted Lasso notepad right here to help me figure out what the heck we're doing this season because we have got lots of things to do, lots of options to bring in, and we've got a couple players I want to sell as well. Luke Thomas and Hamza Chowdhury, who's back from loan, can hopefully help us raise some money and bring in some of those signings that we want to make this season. Funnily enough, last season in the January transfer window, I was trying to sell this guy all year. Yuri Tielemans, now all of a sudden Liverpool are coming in with a 103.8 million euro offer. I'm not selling him this season. He had such a good second half with James Madison injured. He's staying here now. Matter of fact, blocking offers for Tielemans this year. He has redeemed himself 100% in my eyes. One of the players I wanted to sell, Hamza Chowdhury. He's out of here to Spezia for six million or something like that. Kind of chump change at this point with our budget, but it is going to free up wages, give us some money. I think it's time to sign some players now. The first signing I want to make, Actually, I want to make a couple of signings like this. It's a little bit of a nostalgia signing. I want to bring Riyad Mahrez back to the King Power Stadium. He was here when Leicester won the Premier League in 2015 and 16. I want him here again to help us now that we're back in the Champions League. He's older now, he's got experience, and he should be not super expensive. 40 million or so should actually see us be able to get him across the line. 43, we can get him for about 41, I guarantee it. Pep's going to be selling all his players pretty soon with all this financial stuff going on. And we've got him across the line. Just got to give him a contract. And we have freaking done it. Riyad Mahrez is coming back to Leicester City to play for us for at least the next two seasons. He wants a crucial contract, which we gave him. I don't know how that's going to work with Nico Williams. I want him to kind of be backup, really. Not so much a starting player, but we shall see. He could obviously play himself into the first team. I'm so happy to have Riyad Mahrez back in the squad, though. So that was the first signing we made, but it wasn't the first necessary signing we made. This is the first one. Patrick Schick for the striker position. I think he would do absolutely amazing here at Leicester. He's tall, he's pretty fast, he's strong, he's got a good header about him, and he's got experience playing at the top, top level of football at Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League in the Bundesliga against the best clubs in the world, like Bayern and Dortmund. I think he would be absolutely incredible as a long-term potential replacement here for Jamie Vardy. We're going to start the offers proceedings at 63 mil. They might laugh us out the door here, so we might need to come back in for him a little bit later on. And also... We might not have as much money as I thought we did, would for some certain signings. They want Nico Williams and money, like a lot of money. That is an expensive signing. We might honestly not be able to pull this off if we want to pull off other things that we want to complete. Yeah, they don't like that. So ugh, Patrick Schick is not the one for us. Well, if it's not him, how about Julian Alvarez, a World Cup winner with Manchester City? Could he be the one for us? He's young. I know he's 82 rated, but he already has experience playing at the top level of the game and he could be absolutely incredible for us. He's struggling to get a game at certain times for Manchester City in real life, so it would be cheaper than Patrick Schick, and I think it would be potentially a better signing than Patrick Schick. We'll have to wait and see. 45 million, my opening offer. What does Pep have to say to that? 
We're gonna get somewhere here, but they do still want Nico Williams. A lot of interest for this guy. How about 50 million, Pep? What do you have to say to that? 51 million. Okay, I think we're gonna be able to make this work. 51 million for Julian Alvarez. That is a steal if you ask me. But before I talk to Julian Alvarez about a contract, I'm gonna just make an offer for one more player to see if I get a good price for him. And that player, Rich Charlison at potentially striker for us. He can't really get many games at Spurs right now either. And I think he's just such an incredible striker. We all know how annoying he is, what kind of a player this guy is. And I would love, honestly, love to have him at Leicester City. So let's see, can we get a better deal for him? He's a little bit older than Julian Alvarez and he's one overall higher as well. Potential is not as much there, but he's more of a complete player, I guess, right now. So we'll see. We got Julian Alvarez for 51, and I'm going to start offers with Richarlison for 45. It might be worth it if we could get him for this to bring him in instead. Oh, it looks like he's actually going to be more expensive. So I'm walking out of the room. Conte, you can't convince me to buy this guy. Julian Alvarez is our man. And just like that, we've got Julian Alvarez on an important five-year deal. He sees the long-term project here at Leicester, and he likes it. Only problem I have with him, he's 5'7". Is he going to be the player we need up top? I hope so. I sure do hope so. And we're really not wasting any time doing transfer business. I'm making all my signings right now. Ben Chilwell at left back would be incredible. He is obviously known for his time at Leicester. He is not doing too hot at Chelsea. A lot of injuries for him. So I would love to bring him back here. 84 overall, playing in the Champions League. We need a better left back than James Justin or Timothy Castagna. I think he is the guy for us. 45 million, that's all that we needed to pay for Ben Chilwell. I could have gotten a better deal, I, I, but his value is 45 mil. I think that's a good deal, to be honest. And the signings just keep coming in. That door should just stay open at this point. Ben Chilwell's here, 45 million, and a five-year crucial first team contract for him, and he is back at the King Power. He is a Fox once again, Ben Chilwell. Welcome back, buddy. You know what? That's going to have to be all the signings we make for right now. We only have 31 million euros left, but we have made big improvements. I think if we were left with this team that we have right now, we could do pretty well. But still a couple of things that I would like to get done in this window. As a matter of fact, to help us with that, I might have to actually allow offers for Yuri Tielemans again, because my concern is he is not the player that we need is to be a box to box midfielder for us. If we could sell him potentially for like 100 million, like it says we could have gotten for him from Liverpool. I think it might be worth it, guys. So I'm going to allow offers again. I'm not going to transfer list him, but I'm going to unblock offers. I am willing to entertain offers for team limits. I did not realize that we needed this much stuff to get done in this window. And it is now the beginning of August, the Community Shield against none other than Manchester City. I believe they won the league. It kind of ran away with it, season one. So we're playing against them right now. They've got the Indeedy Tifo out, and Jamie Vardy is the captain for this game. He's retiring this season. He has been such a great servant to this club. He is a, in forever ingrained in their history, to be honest. And so we're going to let him have the captain's armband for games like this, or like, you know, Carabao Cup final, every here and there. He'll, he'll pop in, for sure. He'll have a role to play. We've also got the debut of Riyad Mahrez, Finley Marks, who actually is going to be moving over to the left-hand side primarily this season as a backup. I think he actually plays better out on the left, to be honest. Chilwell's debuting. A lot of players getting a start. Let's see what kind of season we might expect to have here against a team like Manchester City. It's also a great opportunity for me to see Tielemans fit into the center midfield again to see if that's realistically a place he can belong or not. And then also, you know, players like Chris Smalling will pop in every here and there. He's also getting old, dropping off in his rating. So, you know, he can't play every game, but he will be an invaluable backup for us in this Champions League season. We are going to be playing so many games. So super important. Mares, yes, showing that aggression to win the ball back. And James Madison playing his first game back from injury as well. So that's huge. Mares, what a through ball. Jamie Vardy beat the keeper. Oh, yes. Jamie Vardy scores for us in the Community Shield. And it feels so good. Riyad Mares getting an assist on his first game back. I love it. Not going to lie. It's a little weird to see Joao Cancelo in a City shirt right now. He is obviously a Bayern and doesn't look like he's coming back to City. It's just a little, it's a little weird. I'm not going to lie to you. It's all, another thing that's weird, by the way, seeing Luca Pellegrini or Lorenzo Pellegrini. That's his name. Be the captain of Man City. De Bruyne is on the team. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here at Man City, but it seems to be working. They won the title last. Look at Finley Marks. Oh, look at him go. He's got Ruben Diaz beat for pace. He's got Nathan Ake beat for pace. He's got the cross to Jamie Vardy. Oh, it was just a little bit too much on that, even though his crossing is really good. Fans are going crazy for this attack. Oh, Jesus. Lorenzo Pellegrini scores for him. How is he just able to sit on the penalty spot like that, though? Holland played the pass, too. Like, what is going on? Kai out on the wing, and Chilwell seems to be keeping up him, despite him being, you know, very rapid, so that's good. Holland, 
Don't let this guy make plays anymore. Apparently, that's what he does now. He's getting assists. A little bit too much free space here for City. I don't know what's going on, if there was a formation change for them or what, but I don't like all the space that they're being allowed. Royna, Joe Gomez, can't play you out of position. I need to not touch my center backs. Holland, for some reason, is out on the wing now. What's going on? Foden, oh, rolls it onto the post. You're joking, bro. We are lucky right now. Jamie Vardy, I like this run. Can we pick him out? No. Bruyne, space opening up for him to potentially have a long shot. Oh my god, or a toast to me, bro. Jeez, what a save. Okay, before they play this corner, gonna freshen up on the wings. Nico Williams at the right, Harvey Barnes on the left. Our usual starting wingers are on the pitch now. And they've got Wilfred Zaha. What the heck? Wilfred Zaha at Manchester City. Raise your hands if you saw that coming. I don't think I see any hands raised, not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, I cannot keep up with the City attacks, but our goalkeeper can. Let's go, Martinez. Odin chests that up, flicks it over, the defender, Chris Smalling, big challenge, let's go. Brun is still on the ball, this second half is just insanely in City's favor, and they're starting to skill on me and stuff, what's that all about? Nico Williams, come on, find that pace, find that space, let's go, Nico Williams. Oh, Nico Williams is so rapid, bro, nothing they can do. Can I beat the keeper? Yes, I can! Nico Williams has got his shooting boots on this season, baby. Yes, last season, he would take the extra touch and get that shot saved. He's got the confidence now. Oh, he celebrates in front of the City fans, too, and goes through the stadium. Let's go. The pressure from City is ridiculous, dude. Look at this. I have nowhere to go. There we go. There we go. That's that link-up play. Tielemans. Oh, my God. Even Tielemans is starting to make those deep runs. We changed to the 4-3-3, so I understand why. James Madison. Come on. Goal back. Ah. Oh, <laughs> just wide. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's all this space we've allowed for Joao Cancelo, and how does he have the stamina? How does he, how is he doing that? Oh, Chris Smalling, you're a massive, you're a hero, bro. Honestly, it's time for corner flag tactics. Or potentially one more goal. A low cross. Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy scores another one. It's a 3-1 win in the Community Shield. This is exactly the start we want. Celebrate that goal. Yes, Leicester City. It's a trophy to start the season. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody cares about the Community Shield. Except for the teams that win it like Leicester. Let's go. That is one piece of silverware to start off the season, and we are only in August. And of course, it's going to be none other than Captain Jamie Vardy to lift the trophy. He's 35 or 36, and he has still got it. A brace today, and he gets to lift this freaking silverware, man. That's the kind of stuff that we want from our old players, our old servants of the club. They're going to help us out in this Champions League season with backup in games like this one. And who doesn't love to see Jamie Vardy lifting a trophy? The only thing that would make that better is if he had a Red Bull on the other hand, actually. By the way, Nico Williams came off the bench, goal and an assist, man of the match. He can't be starting. We cannot have Mares starting over him. We just can't. Another piece of business here, Luke Thomas. He had an okay season for us last year. He's young. He will continue to grow. And 19.5 million. We'll see him go to Arsenal. Hopefully we can use that now to add to our squad and just continue to improve it and go in the right direction. As a matter of fact, that sale gives us enough money to go in for another signing that I want, which is a better experienced center back. And that center back, John Stones. He's at Napoli. He is... Um, Doing well at City. Honestly, he's one of my favorite defenders in FIFA 23 this year. When I did the Man City career mode, he was so good. And I think him and Joe Gomez at center back, wow, that would be an incredible partnership going to the Champions League and all that stuff. So John Stones is the man I want. I think we can get him for a pretty decent price. I'm going to try and get him as close to his value as I can. Okay, so they're really, really wanting this 38.8 million. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. That leaves us with 20 mil after his wages. Hopefully we can maybe raise a couple of more million or something like that and try and get ourselves a better player in as well to help us out in other positions. But I'm going to accept this offer for John Stones. Unfortunately, FIFA 23 is a bit bugged. I didn't get the transfer cutscene, but Stones is here on a three-year deal. He's a crucial first team player. A4 overall, that's an upgrade on Bout Foss, and that'll give him an opportunity to not feel as much pressure to perform for us. And we have an, an, just an incredible center back pairing now, in my opinion. And I mean, just take a look at the team that we have at our disposal here. I think this is actually just such an incredible team. We could make a lot of really, really good things happen this season with a squad like this in the Champions League, in the Premier League, really everywhere. I mean, Alvarez is a little bit low rated, so is Nico Williams, but they're so young. They're going to grow so much this season that it's not going to even matter. We've got just an excellent team, if you ask me. Could we make improvements maybe in the bench or in the midfield? A little bit, I think so. I would love to get in a midfielder. Um, to maybe kind of help out Telemans or push Telemans to continue performing well. But, like I said earlier, I'm not opposed to maybe accepting an offer or two for certain players to help us raise funds to sign a couple more just better options. But I guess we'll have to wait and see because this team needed so much more than I thought they would, honestly. Okay, so I'm not too sure on this offer yet, but I could use cash to help bring in more players. 
And if we could offload a player like Kieran Dewsbury Hall, I love him, don't get me wrong. For Leicester in real life, great player, but in FIFA, he's not growing anymore and he's not that great in game, I'm not gonna lie. So, if we get like pretty close to 30 million for him and reinvest that in a better box-to-box -box midfielder, that would actually be incredible. I have exactly the player in mind to replace him too, so let's try and do it. How about 30 million, sir? Oh my god, Napoli just straight up say yes to that. I could have gotten more than 30 mil for Dewsbury Hall. He's worth 20, that's a great deal. And that is a deadline day deal, by the way. So we've got about three hours. We'll have four hours left if he goes to like sign that replacement, which is plenty of time in FIFA. But uh, we got to make this go quick. Okay, so Dewsbury Hall is out of here. 30 million though for him to go to Napoli. That is a no brainer, if you ask me. So with that being said, it's time to figure out a replacement for Dewsbury Hall. And by that, I mean just sign him. I know who I want. And that someone is none other than Chelsea's Mateo Kovacic. I think he would be great to not only play as backup center midfield for the team, but also to push Telemans to hopefully get better. And who knows, if he plays better than Telemans, he'll start over him. If he doesn't, then he won't. But I really, really love Kovacic in FIFA. He's so fun to use. He's so good on the ball, progressing and getting in forward. The best part is, He's near the end of his contract, and FIFA says I can get him for quite cheap. So to begin proceedings at 33 million, don't call me crazy, because it might actually be enough. Let's try 35. We don't, we can't afford to mess this up because it is deadline day, which I think Grand Potter knows that. But 35 million, if that's enough to bring him across, that is good enough for me. And we're all wearing the same suit, bro. Okay, to be honest, this but this signing is gonna basically bankrupt the club. Look at that, 1,600 euros left in the budget and 31 in the wages. I, <laughs> we're gonna do it though. Mateo Kovacic coming to Leicester. We're stretching every penny we've got for this one. We flipped every couch cushion we could at the Leicester City Training Ground at Seagrave, that's what it's called, to bring Kovacic here. But I'm so glad we did, honestly. This is gonna be a huge improvement to the midfield, just overall. Oh, this is crazy. I have such a good idea. If we could sell Sumari right now, there's three hours left on deadline day. I think it takes a full three hours for deals to go through. This might not happen. I really, really hope it does though. I'm going to try and get just a tiny bit more. We don't even need the money for what I want to do, but I'm going to try and get a bit more from them. If he goes, you're going to see something super crazy happen. Just depends on this though. 25 million for Samari. Come on, Lazio. Don't be cheapos. Uh, that barely moved the tension meter. So 24.5, that should be good enough. Yes, Lazio, take him, please get a contract. You should have already had a contract, actually. Do it quickly. Fingers crossed I got an email right now about this transfer. Fingers crossed. Oh, I see it. I see it. Sumari has sold. Sumari has sold, ladies and gentlemen. You are about to see an absolute madness. Just watch what's about to happen next. Ladies and gentlemen, N'Golo Kante was a free agent. Can you believe that? The nicest man in football is back at Leicester. We are literally just bringing all the boys back. Mares, Chilwell, and now Kante to play like a backup CDM. I think he's 88 rated. Will he start every game over in DD? I don't know, but come on. You can't not get Conte in on a free. That's ridiculous. So this is the team that we are going into the first half of this season with. Julian Alvarez up top. Julian Alvarez, that's how you pronounce that. We've got Nico Williams and Riyad Mahrez to fill in on the right side. The midfield is insane with Kovacic and N'Golo Conte not able to make the team. What world are we living in? And the back line is much improved. The depth is there. We've got everything we need to be successful in every competition, especially, especially the Champions League this year. And in case you were wondering what happened with all the other games in the Premier League, we're gonna try something a little different this season. I will show you over here, the pictures of what happened in the game. So we started off the Premier League campaign with a 3-1 win away at St. Mary's against Southampton, a 2-0 win against Wolves at home, and then a one-all draw against Burnley, who are back in the Premier League, and that was away at Turf Moor. So, a decent start to the season. It actually won us the Premier League Manager of the Month award, which is pretty cool. And now that we are in September, I can also show you our Champions League group in Season 2. To be honest with you, I hadn't even seen the group myself yet. That is rough. Inter Milan, Eintracht Frankfurt, and Young Boys. Young Boys, I'm sorry, but you're just going to be the punching bag of this Champions League group. This is going to be hard to get out of, I'm not going to lie to you. Inter Milan, obviously an incredible team. Frankfurt won the Europa League last year in real life, so these teams are not a force to be reckoned with. Honestly, just taking a look around all the other groups, I'm not going to lie, we have the hardest group. We really, really do. I don't see one that's harder than this, so we've got our work cut out for us in Season 2 of this Champions League campaign. And by the way, we have got a ridiculous fixture schedule this month. Arsenal, then Inter, then Spuds, then West Ham, then Liverpool, and then we get a little bit of a break with Young Boys and Bournemouth. But you can see the fixture congestion is just insane. So I'm so glad we have the squad depth that we need this season. And we're going to finish this episode with this game against Arsenal. And you already know we had to give N'Golo Kante the start today. 
over Indeedy, but we're just going to see what it's like. I think Indeedy's still going to be our starter. But that being said, first game of the we're playing in the Premier League at the King Power in Season 2. We're off to a flying start with, I believe, seven points from a possible nine. Manager of the Month in August won the Community Shield, so can we continue that form with Julian Alvarez leading the line for us today as well? First game of me using him at this club. Very excited to see how this goes. It's also my first time using John Stones. We've got Kovacic on the bench to bring off should we need him, and we probably will do that. And yeah, I'm just really, really looking forward to what this season has to offer. I don't know why Harvey Barnes is wearing number 13, though. I might have to fix the kit numbers. Uh-oh, 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 we're getting played through like butter. Oh my god, John Stones was in a good position to win the ball back for us there. Now James Madison looking at... Oh my god, send a counterattack going. Back from injury, and he is not keeping up with the pace of the game right now. Odegaard, let's fly from range. Big save. Oh my god, that almost went in. Marquinhos, back from loan, and he is a monster. Ricardo Pereira, oh my god, he's making mincemeat of these Arsenal players. Jeez, who Kyle, who? Oh yes, I believe James Madison is offside, but I'm going to have the pop. It was actually on, all right. Oh, Conte somehow wins a header. What's that all about? James Madison over the top here. Nico Williams, what a pass for him. Holy, ball up to Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez, I should say. Still got it. To Conte. Let's let it fly from range. Oh my god, Conte. Do you have a long shot on you? There's no way you do, right? He doesn't shoot. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Where is my back line? Oh, Ricardo Pereira, you're a hero. Oh, Nico Williams. Luke Thomas is playing against us. I just caught, I just peeped that. What a sliding tackle from him, too. Wow. I guess Arsenal needed a left back. Wait a second. I just know, also noticed this. Saka is not wearing the number seven. It's Pepe. Is Saka at the club anymore? Why do the squad numbers get all messed up for everybody? It's not just me. I'm a bit confused, because Saka should be wearing number seven. Which means he's either not at the club anymore, or... I don't know. I hope he is. That would make any sense. Golo Conte, yes. Winning the ball back, trying to spring a counterattack. Ah, uh, but his passing, not quite there. He's good at bringing the ball up the field, and that is about all. Here comes Nicolas Pepe. Luke Thomas, oh my gosh. Whew. We have not had nearly as many good attacks as they have this game. Marquinhos, oh my god. I can't switch to Joe Gomez. Oh my god, we're going to get opened up here. Oh, the post saved our lives. And, oh, Luke Thomas is trying to score. How did they not score a goal? I actually am so confused. That was very lucky for us. We are just about to half time here. Can Julian Alvarez play one in behind? He actually can. He's pretty good with his with the ball at his feet, just in general. Shooting, dribbling, passing, you name it. He can do it all. Wow. What a first half against Arsenal. We are very, very weirdly not doing very well here. And I honestly think it's because the balance is kind of just off in the team. So I'm going to take Tielemans off for Kovacic. I feel like him and Conte are trying to do things that are a little bit too similar. And Nico Williams has been pretty good, but I think Riyad Mahrez might just have a little bit of the difference maker in this game. The pace is not our issue for us, so let's see. Switch some stuff up. I'm glad that we have the options to bring off the bench to switch things up like that, too. That's that's also nice. It's Kovacic making his debut for Leicester City as well. This is why I like him. He can carry the ball forward like literally nobody else. It's incredible how well he can do that. Plays the cross inside. Ricardo Pereira, you're just goaded, bro. You're goaded with the sauce. Kova. Ingolo Kante, Ingolo Kante, the easy pass to James Madison, Madison to Mares. his ball control is incredible, we know that, he'll kill every ball at his feet, and get past all the players, oh my god, Riyad Mahrez, dude, I finally know how to use this guy, everything but the finish was there, everything, Joe Gomez sliding in on Taremi there, oh, that actually worked, Kovacic has the ball, the team has a very different feel to it with these players on the pitch, but I actually like it, Mares. This is incredible dribbling and ball control. Oh, what a pass for Madison. Madison from range. It's just over the bar. Oh, we're playing well, though. Much better in the second half, I have to say. And I do think we need to rethink our tactics a little bit, too. I need to change some instructions now that we have a very different approach, uh, like striker and on the wings, too. We have players that can do a lot of different things, so we need to adjust our tactics. Like, I still had Julian Alvarez to just run in behind and not really try and press the ball. Those were Jamie Vardy tactics. We're not using Jamie Vardy at striker every game anymore, so. We do get a free kick again, and ball, or something like that. So we can put a little bit more on this, and a little bit more curl as well, and a little bit more power as well. Can we get something here? John Stones gets on it, edge of the box. Joe Gomez wins it, tries to distribute it out here. Kova to Riyad Mahrez. Riyad Mahrez doing crazy stuff on the ball. Oh, but he got tackled. Okay, 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 okay. We're looking good. I think we're going to be able to score a goal here pretty soon. Kova, I'm going to play a ball, cross, Harvey Barnes, or James Madison, oh, the cross worked, Mateo Kovacic on a debut, on an assist here, and James Madison scores a goal, this took forever last season, actually, I don't think I ever scored a goal with James Madison myself last season, and he's back and scoring, El Capitano, let's go.
They're going to freshen up some legs. And DD's coming off the bench and James Justin on at right back as well. Just to freshen up legs, like I said. And also, I think that uh, we need we need that taller player in Ndidi in the midfield over Conte right now to win some headers and be a little bit more aggressive physically than Conte can be. You know, I think I figured out what happened with the squad numbers, by the way, as I sit here thinking about this. And when uh, Conte came back, he wore seven at Leicester. When he came back, I think he picked up the seven shirt again over Harvey Barnes, maybe because he's higher rated or something, or maybe because the, the game knows somehow that, like, Conte's at a club, he just wears seven. That's just what he does. I don't know, but I think that's what happened here because Harvey Barnes was the one who got displaced. But we need a different kit number for Mares. What does he wear? 26 at City? Should we give him that? Let me know. Any thoughts about kit numbers in the comments down below? Whatever kit numbers we do want to give, though, I'm going to decide them at the start of the next episode and we're going to leave them that way. I'm not going to change kit numbers in the middle of the season just to keep it realistic. And usually squad numbers are due sometime in September, I think just before the Champions League starts anyway, so. On Stones, our defense is all over the dang place. What is going on? Riyad, Julian Alvarez, Riyad again. Yes, get past Luke Thomas. Riyad is incredible all of a sudden. I can never get him right at City, but at Leicester, we're doing so well with him. Harvey Barnes, back post. What a through ball. Kovacic, oh, wow. Double save from Ramsdale, that was insane. James Madison to play in another corner. Can we get this on someone's head? Chilwell wants it. Almost worked. Kova. He does well in these wide areas, apparently, because his dribbling and on-the-ball ability are so good. So James Madison or Riyad Mahrez, that works too. Riyad getting past Luke Thomas, going to the byline. Inside, Julian Alvarez takes the touch. Shouldn't have taken the touch. Should have just shot first time. Could have been a goal. But this is looking way, way, way better. We're playing much, free, much more free-flowing football with this new-look team. Julian Alvarez, can he finish? Julian! Oh, that was good. Another save from Ramsdale, though. He's such a good keeper. Last play of the game here. They're trying to progress the ball up the field, but we're putting the pressure on him, and we are not letting them do anything but pass around the back. And that is a simple but successful 1-0 win against Arsenal to end off the episode. I am very happy with that, to be honest with you. We were under pressure in the first half, but like I said, switched up some stuff in the second, and we were much the better side in pretty much every department. That is excellent. Excellent performance from Leicester City. And what an excellent thing to see at the end of the episode. The Champions League graphic, baby. We have got our first group stage game coming right up in the next episode. Well, I would say this is a very successful start to Season 2. This is the starting 11 that I'm feeling partial to at the moment, but I am willing to let my mind be changed as far as that is concerned with players like Nico Williams and Wilfred Ndidi. I'm okay with playing Mares more. I'm okay with playing Conte more. And honestly, Tielemans, we might sell him to kind of help improve the squad in January. I don't know, because he's... He clicks at Cam, but we don't need him at Cam. We need him to play at center midfield, and it's just not exactly working out. So you guys let me know your opinions on things like kit numbers in the comments down below. I will finalize them myself in the next episode and share that with you. But I hope you did enjoy the start of Season 2 of the Leicester City Career Mode. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. If you're new around here, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episodes here. We're going to have a good year. I know it. We could probably win everything. Not going to lie. Um, yeah. Other than that, though, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and peace.